Hi, I'm Gary Stearman. Welcome to Prophecy Watchers. We have a couple of really interesting guests today, along with Mondo Gonzalez. And uh, the guest to my left, Chuck Consulman. Welcome to Prophecy Watchers. Thank you so much. And Carrie Solomon. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Now, gentlemen, you have produced a, a motion picture that's, uh, that's making waves, I must say. And uh, Mondo, between us, we have here quite an adventure. Uh, the movie is called Nefarious. And let's just start by defining the word nefarious. What does that mean? Well, wicked, really. Effectively, just wicked. Wicked. And, and um, yeah, and uh, it's actually the uh, name of the primary character of the piece. He's, uh, he's uh, called Nefarious. He's, uh, it's the name of a demon in this piece. The name of a demon. He says nefarious, I say nefarious, we'll get it together somehow, but this movie has, has made waves uh, be, because it raises a number of questions. Uh, as questions like, can, could the situation in this movie really happen in real life? Does it happen? Mondo, you've seen the movie. And I have by seen the way, it yeah, many times, and uh, to me, th this is an incredible movie because it, it I think it opens up a window that we all believe, we're all, as Christians, we all read the Gospels, right? We read that Jesus is going around, he's confronted by the enemy, and yet sometimes I think we sanitize that and keep it in the church, when in reality, when we look out the world, we say, oh, that currently isn't happening, that was back in Bible days. And so what I thought was fabulous about the movie is, you know, there's a plot, let's, maybe let's, let's establish maybe some of the plot and how it comes to to be in a movie, because oftentimes people might say, well, I don't just want to watch a movie about demons, because that's not really what it's about. But let's, let's talk about how, how it came to be a, a motion picture here. Sure. Well, Steve Dace, who is a uh, political commentator, uh, who is unique in the field in that he approaches things from a theological perspective. That's his whole yes. thrust and mission. Uh, he was moved, uh, I think, in the shower uh, about uh, 10 years ago to write a book. He wanted to do something along the lines of the screw tape letters. Yeah. And the first line that came to him was words along the lines of uh, the demon saying to the world at large, I'd like to thank all of the useful idiots that made this possible, you know, for basically just not believing in us. And uh, so he, he wrote the book, uh, which was sort of a stream of consciousness, uh, sort of manifesto from a demon about how he took down Western civilization. And um, we were fans of Steve and fans of the book, but we just said when we spoke with Steve, you know, we'd like to make this a movie. But we're going to need a story here. He's, he's going to need somebody to talk to, and he's going to need a set of uh, circumstances, the, the imaginary circumstances surrounding this, for a story to work. And so um, what we framed was we worked with Steve, and he came to visit, and we spent a few days. And we said, okay, how about we do this? How about we set up that there is a, a condemned man in prison, uh, ironically here in Oklahoma. We used Granite State Reformatory. And um, this condemned serial killer... Uh, his prison psychiatrist has just committed suicide, calling all of his recent findings into question. And the state will not execute you unless you're sane. So they need a last minute evaluation. They bring in a progress, socially progressive, atheist, brilliant psychiatrist who is going to analyze yes. this criminal and determine whether he's sane. And the warden warns the shrink on the way in, this guy's going to get in your head. If you listen to him, you're going to think you're the killer, not him. And very quickly, as the, the psychiatrist meets the condemned, the condemned says, basically, I, you got this all wrong. I want to be executed. I am a demon in full possession of a human being, and we're done with him. It's time for him to go to hell. And so the question becomes, is this all an act and, mm -hmm. or, to, to avoid being executed? Or is the prisoner legitimately insane, or is it a demon in full possession of wow. the human being? Now, that's a great idea, because it gives you all kinds of opportunity to talk about uh, the demonic side of things uh, w without getting, I guess, crazy, I, I should say. But on the other hand, and you guys can comment at, at your leisure, but it hit me hard as, as someone who is a believer, as someone who believes in devils, demons, all sorts of, uh, of shall we say, the negative side of the spiritual world. And I think you've caught something that'll, that'll make people um, look again at what they really believe. I think that people have to realize that the demonic exists, and that was the goal of the movie, to show that God is not evil, 
because a lot of people blame God for everything. Yeah. And that the devil exists and he's the one that you should be taking that anger out on. So there is good and evil and then there's struggle. You know, it's sad, but we use the demon. And I know this is going to sound crazy to the audience. We use the demon to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to say, well, I'm not going to see that movie because that's obviously way too far. But in reality, it's not. Because today in our society, our society is so lost. People are so forsaken God that if a pastor or a priest or even somebody of authority would say these things that we have him say, no one's going to come to the movie and no one's even going to listen. But ironically, because we have the demon say it, people are listening to it. And so we use the demon in a way where he's angry at the gospel. Mm -hmm. So we have to justify it. So like yeah. the atheist will say something at one point like, you believe in God? And the demon will look at him and say, you're a fool. He says, of course he exists. Unfortunately for both of us, of course he exists. So the demon is validating everything we all know. As the demon points out to the, the, the psychiatrist, he says, I know more theology than any human being who's ever existed. He knows every word of scripture and he believes every fact, historical fact in scripture. He questions God, the creator's motivation. He can never say the word God. Mm -hmm. He never ever says that word. He never ever says the name Jesus. Yeah. You know, they're referred to, he refers to God as the enemy. He refers to Jesus as the yes. carpenter. That's as far as he'll go. But his bile and his anger at the gospel message, ironically, are what's so convincing for the audience. Indeed. Yeah, I think it's fascinating when you, when as, as I was watching it, it's it's so thoroughly scripture. I mean, I think about Ephesians six twelve. Why we wrestle not against flesh and blood, and and and, and Paul lists out all these principalities, but even James two, right? James two nineteen that the devils believe in God. They have they, they I don't say they have faith, but they tremble, and so the idea. Uh, of, of Satan quoting scripture to Jesus in Matthew 4. Well, I can, well, you know, it is written, I can quote Psalm 91. So you, you have all this, it's so thoroughly biblical. And I, 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 what I found fascinating was, it's, again, it's not just some treatise on demonology, that wasn't the point, but how it interacts with the daily things of life and how the, the, this war that we're in, this warfare that we have, is so pervasive in every way. And I think even as Christians, we tend to forget it. Again, we leave, we walk out, and we think, oh, yeah, it's kind of, the world's pretty sanitized. But in reality, the battle is waging constantly at every turn. Absolutely. I think one of the things that the audience should know as well is that you're going to think of this as a horror movie. It's not a horror movie. It's two guys in a room, one who says he's a demon and one who's there to investigate whether he is. And it's C.S. Lewis screw tape letters, but a mature version of that. The reason the poster with the triple face and the trailer has intimidated a lot of believers. We actually made a mistake on this. We wanted to bring 15 to 29 year old young kids into the theater because they're obsessed with this demonic satanic garbage that's in the theaters, right? And so we figured if we showed them a trailer like that, they would come in. What happened was the reverse, the church didn't come at all. They were scared of it. They said, I don't watch that stuff. But I can promise you, we promise you that that is not what this is about. It's more of a thriller than it is a, a, a horror movie. We're the guys that wrote God's Not Dead. And this movie, ironically, has more direct quotations of scripture and more riffs on scripture than that film did. It's just they're almost invisible to the audience as they're going by because it's in the heat of this argument this, this, this grappling between the psychiatrist and the demon as far as what, is, what are the great issues? What are the, what are the meta issues of our existence? And you make a, an excellent point about the reality of demonic uh, inhabitation, or habitation in a human being. Still though, and Mondo, how, how did you react? It, it's, it's got some, some rather dramatic uh, mm -hmm. scenes at the end. Well, I, I wanna kinda hold that as a cliffhanger because we're gonna, <laughs> because it's good. We're gonna take a little break here where you can see how to get our magazine, uh, again, where we address all the issues of our day. Current events, as we know right now, are, are heating up in so many ways, so take a listen. It has never been more important for believers to understand what the Bible says about the days that we are living in. In case you haven't noticed, the whole world is spinning out of control, but we are not surprised because many of the things taking place were prophesied in the Bible thousands of years ago. 
That's why we want to offer you a very special subscription to our magazine, The Prophecy Watcher, that will keep you on the cutting edge of Bible prophecy. Stay informed on prophetic world events. Follow the nuclear threats from Russia and Iran, China's march to world domination, the likelihood of another global pandemic, the rise of artificial intelligence and transhumanism, war in the Middle East, the UFO phenomenon, and the latest technology preparing the world for the mark of the beast. With your gift of $50 or more to support the worldwide outreach of Prophecy Watchers, you will receive 12 issues of the magazine in either print or digital format. You will also receive 10 bonus DVDs that feature in-depth teaching on the ancient book of Enoch, heaven and the new Jerusalem, the biblical case for the rapture, a look at how God put the gospel in the stars, what really happened at the Tower of Babel, and Ezekiel's prophecy on the battle of Gog and Magog. This special offer is available anywhere in the United States with free shipping included. Don't wait. Pick up the phone right now and call the toll-free number on your screen or visit us at prophecywatchers.tv. Stand with us today and help us take the message of Christ's soon return to the whole world. Well, welcome back. And, and Gary, before the break here, we were talking about just the way that, again, the, at the end of the movie, you have what the demon wants and uh, a, an execution of, of his host. And again, when you look in Scripture, this isn't anything new. That's why I, we, we can't be scared of this because it's in the Bible. Talk a little bit about, you will, for a moment as we were talking off air, that talk about some of the interesting things that <laughs> happened during the filming. I mean, you guys are pr promoting truth, scriptural truth here. Yeah. Uh, was, the, was the spiritual battle real behind the scenes of the filming? It was amazing. I mean, uh, it, it made, well, you know, we, we also filmed Unplanned, the story of Abby Johnson, who was a Planned Parenthood surgical clinic director who changed her mind and became, is now the most well-known pro-life advocate. We thought that was a struggle. It was nothing compared to Nefarious. No. Wow. Uh, we just, uh, if I just limited some of the stuff to the mark, well, uh, we were on set. We had two ministry teams. We had a husband uh, of, of a husband and wife team. He's an ordained minister. She's uh, in ministry. We had a Catholic priest for Catholics. He's a trained exorcist. Um, during our shooting, the exorcist had an emergency appendectomy and his appendix burst during removal. Uh, you almost died. Uh, our building was groaning. Uh, we were told that the day that we shot the discussion of how the devil operates was the highest sustained winds in the history of the state of Oklahoma. Now, this is Oklahoma, where like the song <laughs> exactly. says the wind comes sweeping down the plane. The plane, girders right? are right. literally moaning and groaning like we're in hell. The crew that are not believers literally stop and they look up and like they say, that sounds like we're in hell. And it just so happens that we're shooting the scene that we're talking about the devil. When we go to a normal scene, it stops. We take a break, not shooting, it stops. We go back to the scene with the devil, 10, 20 minutes later, here it comes, and unbelievable. Right. I mean, and it's obvious that they're like, I mean, these kinds of things. Emails, texts, cell phones, all don't work. 12 car crashes total, cars total, and yet not one scratch on any single person. We got hit with COVID, wiped the crew out. The building we're in in Burbank, California, which is doing post, had the Chosen and us working in it. During a rainstorm, now this doesn't happen during rainstorms, especially in LA, okay? What happens is the roof of the building gets ripped off. Now this is a post house, so we're everything is electrical. Yeah. So it fills, wow. okay, the roof, literally falls into the parking lot outside. The, the building fills with water, wiping out the building and all the electrical stuff and trying to take out the stuff. It's unbelievable. We went to an office depot on the way out to Texas because we were driving, we were bringing uh, gear. And all we wanted was a yellow pad, a yellow pad yellow and pad. a pen because we get creative <laughs> when yeah. we drive. And we had some great ideas for the movie. We go to the door and the, the manager says, you can't come in. All the electricity just went out. We can't take your money, okay? We're in the post house. It's a humongous post house called Deluxe. We're ready to roll it for like the first time to finish it off. 100,000 square feet, highest tech facility in the world. Backup generators. The electricity goes out, the backup generators go out. Right 
when we're about to press the button. Our final quality check. We leave, check. our final quality. We leave, everything is normal again. So we are bombarded. But I here's mean, the best one. So the night of our premiere, we had double, double instances of demonic manifestation. So we're doing, we're in a suite, we're doing the interviews of the stars and the producers and things. And all the equipment is malfunctioning. The sound mixer is, uh, and eventually gets to the point where there's a voice coming out of a couch. So we had Father Carlos Martins was one of our Let, guests. Let's just repeat that for a second. Yeah, so you always say, voices coming out of the couch. <laughs> yeah, so we, oh. had, okay. we happened to have shortly before that interviewed Father Carlos Martins. He does a thing called uh, the Exorcist Files podcast. It's one of the better known podcasts. So we called him up. We said, we need you back at the suite. So he shows up and he looks like out of a movie. He's got the purple stole, he's got the whole thing, he's got the Latin right, and he's got the holy water. So he comes into the suite, which is on the fifth floor. He's got French doors to a small balcony behind his back. There's no room for a person back there. And if, we, if there was a person, we would easily see him or her. He starts performing the right in, in Latin. And when he's done, he said, I was troubled for most of it. I had a female voice chanting in my right ear from behind me in a language I couldn't quite discern until he said, I, I, and he kind of smiled. He said, until I got to the portion of the right where it says, bow now before the holy and terrible name of Jesus. And this is and in Latin. Alone. Okay. Wow. And by the way, the, the lights were all flashing while this is going on. The sound machine breaks down, does not working. The cameras are not rolling. This is this thing. But I will tell you, everyone in the audience, that the hammer and the authority of God, when he brings that forward, the minute he said that about Jesus, the power phrase, that for them to bow down to Jesus, the voices stop, the lights stop, the cameras work, the sound mixer comes on, wow. all the voices are gone, and you can feel it. It's like a crackle. It's, you have to be there, but to see the authority, it is in no way comparable. It, I mean, there's nothing to describe the power of the Lord throwing out evil mm -hmm. and like they flee in terror and it, it we've dealt with this for months and it's just unbelievable and you know praise be to god i mean we have nothing to fear but if you go to these places and play with tarot cards and fortune tellers and horoscopes and reiki and yoga and all these crazy things that's how the demons come and they they get permission that way I you're calling ask, them i have to ask a question chuck and carrie uh what has been the public reaction to this film, uh, uh, positive and negative? It's been, uh, it's, it goes both ways. Uh, what's happened is originally the church was scared of it. Now the church is embracing it. You know, uh, we had uh, Pastor Jack Hibbs uh, from Calvary Chapel out in Chino Hills in California. He showed it to, yes. I believe, uh -huh. 6,000 people. I think 5,000 in the sanctuary and 1,000 and, and in the overflow rooms. Uh, a number of pastors, the... Uh, the most popular, as I understand it, Bible study course right now, or scriptural the theological course, is uh, a course on Nefarious. It's a, it's a video discussion between Dr. Jeremiah Johnson from Prestonwood Baptist down in Dallas, where we are, uh, where we newly are, and Steve Dace, and they have about a six-part uh, study on hmm. that. And so um, the church's discovery, uh, the crit so... Well, the, uh, the best example I can give is this. On Rotten Tomatoes, which rates films, yes. the audience rating positive floats between 96 and 98. And the critics... Which is crazy <laughs> high. That's crazy high. Right. And the critics <laughs> hover 25 to 30. Right. Because they hate it, obviously, because the haters hate... The, product, the negatives of all this, and by the way, people are going to see this movie three, four, five times. Yeah. We have the data. Everybody goes, because they're using it as a theological tool. They, the first time they see it, their eyes are open. They're like, that was great. I got to go back. I'm going to bring my friends. And then they do the second. Then they, they're buying it for Christmas. I mean, it's crazy. The negative on this is, of course, what you would expect. If you kick the bumblebee uh, hive, what happens with the bumblebees? They get, they get angry, right? Well... Any, and this has been our career when we did Unplanned, we've done God's Not Dead, Do You Bleed, etc. You cannot just do this kind of thing without being prepared and praying for protection. Mm -hmm. But God is with us. And so the haters, all of the civilized world, what did the Lord say? If the world loves you, yeah. you're doing something wrong. So like people would come up to us and say, oh, you should win an Academy Award. I'm like... You know what? Don't go there, because if I do that, I have done something very, very wrong. You know my reaction to the film? I'm serious now. I watch the film, and my reaction is I'm watching the psychiatrist interview the prisoner. 
And the more I watch the film, the more I'm saying to myself, I really wish I could sit across the table from that psychiatrist and tell him what's real and what's not. Uh, in other words, this psychiatrist is a highly educated man, but he is clueless about spiritual things. That's and, what we find in the world. And the dramatic potential there is enormous. I mean, this is a very moving film, wouldn't you say? I, I would say that, you know, uh, we, we kind of joke with, with Bob because uh, I've gone to the movie several times with Bob and, and he's asleep in five minutes. Okay. <laughs> but this one was riveting. I mean, he's like, it's the only movie I've been to where I was riveted from the beginning all the way to the end because the conversation is so powerful. And again, for those, that are, for, for those of you who think from, in spiritual terms, uh, you're going to be blown away because you're going to be like, oh, that's scriptural. And oh, look at the way that the world is here. And, and there's no greater time. I think that the, the, the dialogue and the script was so appropriate to match what is happening right now in our culture. Absolutely. And to provide a right. scriptural response and to see, again, the way that the enemy is the root of all these lies that we see. I, I would just like to say, though, so that the audience understands is that when we wrote it, you know, we wrote it, produced it, directed it. When we wrote it, when we were in the room, I will tell you, we're two guys from Jersey. We can't do dialogue like this. So this, this is the spirit. This was way beyond us. And I will tell you, we're in the room working one night late, and uh, there's a scene about av abortion. We reveal what abortion is and so on and so forth. Uh, um, uh, as well as we take on the woke agenda and everything yeah. in this film, Euthanasia. But we're in the room, and as we're in the room, the spirit drops in the room, it's palpable, and we start speaking out dialogue to each other. And one of the lines was the line at the end of the abortion sequence where they're talking, uh, all hell rejoices. Mm -hmm. That was straight from God. Yeah. And it was that he basically is saying, when a child is aborted, all hell rejoices. I want you to think of the power of this. I would say to everyone, do not fear this, be not afraid. This movie is designed as a tool. It's to reinforce your faith. You know, one of the folks from Movie Guide, it wasn't the reviewer, but it's one of their guys, one of their executives on staff, he came to a premiere and he smiled after a premiere and he said, this movie is a theological drive-by shooting <laughs> in a good way. And I'm like, you know what? That's, I'll take that. Yeah. I, I think that and, and the other compliment I'll take is Jim Caviezel, the actor who played naturally Jesus in The Passion of the Christ, he went to go see the movie three times at the theater in one week, and he brought everybody he yeah. could get hold of, uh, and he just thought it was the best movie he'd seen since, uh, you know, as faith-driven since The Passion. Yep. So uh, that's kind of our, our, our quiet urging to your audience to, to not be afraid of this. You have touched a nerve I'm with this film. There's no doubt about it, and it, it's got a message that needed to be said. Uh, I'm really uh, happy that, that, that people are reacting in the way that you describe, because in a way, when I saw this, uh, this is a very, very tough subject. I wonder if people can ta actually take this. But now, uh, I've, I've seen it like three times myself. <laughs> and after examination and self-examination, I've said to myself, this is a message that really needs to be heard. You know, it takes the screw tape letters to another level, right? It certainly does. And I mean, as, as you know, I'm a screw tape letters fan. And, and, and you, you will see this movie multiple times, as I did. And we want to take a little break here where you can see how to get the movie. Because, again, I promise you, you will be blessed by it. It's a rare occasion when Prophecy Watchers becomes emotional about recommending a film. But the story you've heard today is life-changing and every Christian should want to see this movie. Don't let the DVD cover scare you away. It's not a horror film. It is an intimate look at the ancient battle of good versus evil. I've heard Gary say on more than one occasion that one of the main problems in the church today is that they do not believe in a real Satan. And if they do, they choose to dismiss him as a weakened, defeated foe, as opposed to a roaring lion, whose mission is to separate mankind from spending all eternity with a loving God. Prepare to be on the edge of your seat as you listen to a fascinating conversation between a demon who occupies the body of a man and a self-assured psychologist who casually ignores the demon's mind games until the narrative changes. Nefarious is available from our ministry in either DVD or Blu-ray format for your gift of $30 or more. 
with shipping included anywhere in the USA. It also includes a free bonus DVD. Included is our way of thanking you for supporting the work of Prophecy Watchers. For our international friends, please note that all prices quoted are in U.S. dollars and additional shipping fees may apply. Visit us at prophecywatchers.tv or call us toll free at the number you see on the screen. Not long ago, we held a prophecy conference in Orlando, Florida, where 18 speakers delivered 33 powerful messages on Bible prophecy, the Antichrist, Klaus Schwab, and the Great Reset, the Nephilim, Heaven and Hell, and the War of Ezekiel 38. We're making these entire conference DVD sets available for your gift of $85 or more, with shipping included in the USA. We'll also include a free bonus DVD, plus a free copy of the film we've spoken of today, Nefarious. Call us at the toll-free number you see on your screen, or visit our website for more information. Thanks for tuning in today. If by chance you don't know The Carpenter personally, we've prepared a special video on our website, introducing you to your roadmap to eternal life, all through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Visit us at prophecywatchers.com and may God bless you on your journey. Well, welcome back and we're talking to the producers, writers, directors, all the above of Nefarious the Movie. And, and we've kind of, uh, of established uh, really again the plot and, and and really the spiritual warfare not only again in a in a fictional environment of, of the movie itself but also coming around the entire production of it um, you know at the end of the day what's your guys is we got you know another minute here what's your guys's goal for this movie what would you like to see just more souls in heaven when all is said and done I mean it's just you know uh, it, 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 scripturally, if we if we perform, you know, you hope for the thirty, the sixty, or the hundredfold. I think, I think this movie could go beyond that. And uh, Carrie, a few years ago, got from his sister a gift. She was not aware of the context, but she was awakened and told to get him a particular thing. That she, uh, it's a giant picture, and the, the the image there is irrelevant, other than the part at the bottom where it says, "Well done, well done, my good and faithful servant." Mm -hmm. I think what we, the, what we want to do is we want to say and let the world know there is a God. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially, and if you play with the occult, you're not going closer to God, you're going closer to the devil. So if there is a God and there is a devil, and you go consistently close to the devil, you're going you're gonna to be devoured. And I think that the importance here of this movie is that we basically point out there is good, there is evil, there is a mighty struggle going on. Gee, we know who wins in the end. Mm -hmm. Jesus wins in the end. But the problem is how many people are going to be lost between here and the victory, right? And so you have to, you have to reach down. We wanted to reach down and show people, open your eyes and look at something that you've never seen before. And, may, and this is a powerful way to do it. Save souls. Chuck and Carrie, thanks so much. And uh, keep up the good work. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you so much for having us. I'm Gary Stearman. This is Prophecy Watchers. Hey, you keep watching. We are. <laughs>